Hey everyone, welcome back to another very exciting Unity VFX tutorial. In this video, I'll be discussing a new feature that was more or less silently released around the time of Unity 5.5. But here I'll be taking a look at it with Unity 2017.3 since this version also added in some extra things that are important to know about too. Basically, the feature I want to talk about is animation blending for sprite sheet animations, or flipbooks or texture sheet animations, whatever you want to call them. And to demonstrate that feature, I've got these two simple particle systems side by side. On the left we have the green smoke with no blending and just a straightforward use of the texture sheet animation module, as you can see right here. And on the right we have the blue smoke with a special shader that allows intermediate frames of the texture sheet to be blended together by passing in additional vertex information. So you can see that right here. The way it is right now, it's kind of hard to see the difference between the two and that's because each particle running through the texture sheet has a lifetime of about 2 seconds. With a texture sheet animation that has 64 frames, eight columns, uh, eight columns and eight rows, we have enough visual data to show a different frame of the animation smoothly. But let's see what happens when we increase the duration of the particles on the screen by changing the simulation speed for both systems. And now you'll notice the, the particle system with no blending starts to look laggy and jittery or like it's running at a lower FPS than the actual game. And that's because the particles for the system are using the same texture sheet animation over multiple game render frames since there's nothing in between to render. While over here with the blue system, the shader is doing some interpolation and throwing out some blended intermediate frames, which allows us to inflate the duration of a particle using a texture sheet animation without introducing laggy visual artifacts. This is also really useful if you've got game mechanics that slow down time, or if you just want to have longer animations while conserving texture memory by not having to render out so many frames, and thus keeping your textures smaller. I'm still waiting for optical flow maps to come through, and it seems like it's something that Unity is working on based on a forum post I saw somewhere, but basically that would allow per pixel motion data to be taken into account so that the frame blending is even smoother. But until then, this is really useful and the team at Unity I think is still doing a great job with all of this uh, new particle stuff. So let's take a look at a few more examples. And after we take a look at these, uh, I'll just show you how to actually set up your own particle system to use that new feature. So you can see what this looks like, right? It's all jittery, uh, it's skipping, it's basically hanging on the same frame over time. Let's switch this over to a material that uses the new shader. And you can see now it's kind of smoothly blended in, but it doesn't look so great when you have a lot of detail. So when you saw the explosion, which has a lot of fine details that you should be able to see, it doesn't look that good. But once you get to the smoky bits without the details in the explosion, it looks much better. And optical flow maps would help with that because then you'd have the per pixel motion data carrying the, the, the blending along. But this is fine for now. And let's also take a look at this rising smoke system right here. So again, this is using the blending, right? So you can see it looks pretty smooth even when it's really slow. And then again, if I swap this out for a material that doesn't have the blending, like this one, if I turn the simulation speed down, it looks really weird, right? So if you want a smokestack with smooth frames, this feature is really great for that. Okay, so let's create a new particle system that we can use to show off this feature. I'm just gonna reset that, take down the start speed because we don't need them going anywhere right now. Turn the shape down as well. Turn the emission down to two. Move this up to 1.25 just so it centers on my screen. We can just create a new material. Let's create a new, we'll just call it uh, particle for now. And we'll go to particle and anim alpha blended, right? So this is the, this is the one that was added it in around Unity 5.5, I think. And we can just go ahead and choose a texture. So we'll choose this texture sheet from Ultimate VFX, 8x8. Eight eight. And I think that's good. So we'll go ahead and assign this like so. Maybe make this a bit bigger, start size. And enable the texture sheet animation module and make it 8x8. Eight eight. And you can see what this looks like. So right now, if I just had, for example, particle alpha blended, this is what we'd see. And you can see it's all jittery and stuff. If we use the anim alpha blended, we'll get all this flickering because we need to enable custom vertex streams and pass in UV2 and then pass in anim blended. And now you can see it's really smooth. So if we, for example, let's set the start rotation to be randomized like that, right? We can make it quick or we can make it even 10 seconds long, right? And it's all smooth like. So again, just a comparison between the regular, regular shader and the an animation blend in shader. So that's fine. That's using the older shaders that you might be used to. We can also use the standard surface shader, unlit or lit, doesn't really matter. We'll use unlit for now. That also have this feature built in. And the cool thing is that you can actually just hit apply and it'll automatically fill in these things based on what's needed. So before, you know, we had the extra stuff. We didn't need it, took it out for us. We can just set this to, I don't know, transparent, I think, or fade. One of these is fine. Multiply, we'll leave that as for now. And we can just enable blend it. That's it, right? So that's all it takes. Now it's going to warn you that there's something's missing. You need these two. We only have these three. So we need to add these two on. Just hit apply and that's it, right? So the newer shader has some options built in that make it even easier to apply this effect. 
So I wanted to make that video because in the next tutorial, I'll also be using that feature for some of the smoky bits when I make the effects for this electric sword. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you guys next time.